we go. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I'm tired. Hopefully, everybody can hear us. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Doing good. All right. Morning, everybody. Yo, Joe. Good morning. Morning. Mark, you want to give the uh, want to give the intro? <laughs> so, good morning to our viewer, which is probably Mike. Uh, <laughs> uh, so this is the GI Joe 3D printing podcast, and today we're going to be doing a live demo uh, in Fusion 360 of the um, 83, 82, 83 GI Joe Manta. So this was a mail away item that I didn't have as a kid, but I had some friends that did. I thought this thing was pretty cool. Um, there's going to be some challenges with it. Uh, there's a lot of things that uh, the materials aren't going to take too kindly, so we're going to design around that. Um, and there's one piece on here that's just really, the way we're going to build it in Fusion is not very intuitive, but it's the way that it's got to be done, uh, to the best of my knowledge anyway. And anyone's welcome to correct me. I am still learning. I'm not going to, I'm always learning. So we're going to kind of jump right in see if i can bring that up cool um so we're gonna start uh as usual we're gonna grab some blueprints and i can't recommend enough gi uh, i'm sorry uh 3d joe's 3d joe's.com for all your high-end gi joe vehicle blueprint needs um where here we go so uh, I usually take my blueprints and I'll clean them up a little bit in Photoshop just to unbusy them and kind of crop them so that I'm not looking at, uh, you know, multiple images at once. Um, so from here, I'm just going to do uh, insert and canvas. And grab this. This will be from the side. So that's one. Uh, since we have the blueprint and I physically have a Manta right here, um, we're going to build this thing at the original three and three quarter size and then scale it up. And that way, um, I'm just, I have a, a good, easy representation of all the sizes and proportions. Uh, so with this first canvas that I've dropped on here, I'm just going to, I'm going to take the missile torpedo. I'm going to grab my calipers and measure it. And this it says it's 51.5 millimeters head to toe. So we'll go to the uh, thing here and we're going to hit calibrate. And I'll grab the back end and I'll grab the front. And what I say, 51.5. Correct. Just like that, 51.5, boop. So now that's about the size we want. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to edit and just bring this up so that the, the bottom of the, the board is on that axis. Okay. And we've got one more uh, canvas to bring in. And it's the top. Over here, we go to the top, plop it in, and I'm gonna, it, it's gonna wiggle on me um, before I'm done, but I'm gonna try and just center up the main board on that axis there. And, uh, you know, we've got the same missile here, so I'm gonna, just for the sake of argument, we're gonna calibrate this the same way. Try to line it up, yep. But it's, this is just going to illustrate how the blueprints aren't uh, quite exactly. perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So if we look at kind of both at the same time, see, I made that missile the same size, but you can see on the top view, the board's much longer. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, that's what we're going to make fit. And we'll just shrink this down. Uh I did that horribly wrong. Hold on. Uh, 
Okay. I'm going to call that good enough. Okay. I have to put this back where I wanted it. About there. Okay. Let me get some of the stuff out of my way. All right. So uh, there's there's some real basic shapes here um, that make up the majority of this thing. And, and and I was telling Mike this earlier. Like anytime you look, you we grab one of these projects and we say to ourselves, "This is an easy one. It'll go quick." It's always that's always kind of the kiss of death. <laughs> um, this one really isn't too bad though. Like the, the the yeah. This uh the mast is the main thing that's gonna be an issue, uh, like I was saying. Um but we're gonna we're gonna focus on our workflow and uh working kind of big to small. Mm -hmm. So I'll get started. All I did was grab um up here is kind of the the, the preparatory tools. Um so I told her what I wanted. Uh, we're going to use the line tool for most of this. There's a tool here called the fit point spline. And it might seem like this would be a good idea to, to create these curves along here. But uh, this, this tool is trash. Um, even though like, it looks like real easily I can come in and uh, cr create that shape that I want. But what you end up with is a shape that doesn't want to be modified later on um, because the curves that it's creating seem to just be too complex for uh, for fusion. And it might work okay on this one, but a as a habit, I don't like to use that tool. I like to just use the line tool and then um, bend it where I need to. And we're gonna we're gonna do this in halves, and just mirror it. So you can see how um, it kind of shaded in blue a little bit. Mm -hmm. this time. But when once it's um, once it's shaded blue like that, you know it's a closed shape. And we can grab it. I'm gonna hit E to extrude. Go over to the side view. And uh, yep. real easy, I pull that up. But I'm gonna go ahead and measure the board that I've got here. Um, Just to be safe, so this is uh, about 3.5. So make it a little thinner than what it's got on the blueprint. Okay. So I I came up with a new. Uh, I don't know if you want to call it a theory, but I, I realized something. And what I realized is that um, there's this thing called the uncanny valley. Uh, do you guys know what that is? <laughs> I've heard you say it. I don't know what it is. So the uncanny valley is when something, um, whether it's an animation, an illustration, a robot, or an android, like n those are things now, um, when they start to look human, but they're not quite human, so it's weird. Yeah. It's like yeah. off-putting. That yeah. Yeah. The closer they get to human, the, the weirder, weirder it looks. Fucking look, right? Yeah, yeah. That's that's the uncanny valley. So. I've realized that the same thing exists for these toys, these Joe toys that we've been looking at our whole damn lives. Um, if they're off a little bit, your eye and your brain knows. And even if you can't quite put your finger on it, when they're when they're not right, they're not right. And you instantly recognize it. And so I'm calling that like the the uncanny valley of toy design. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is we've got this um, this kind of this curve, this lip at the front end of the board, and we're flat here. So I'm I've just created a line, and I'm going to split body, 
And then this back half, I'm going to make that go away. I'm going to come up to draft. I grab the face that I want to pull from and then the face that I want to turn. And then I'm just going to tilt it up, tilt it up but not quite all. I'm going to do another one of these about halfway. Okay. So I do that and then I'll do it again. Okay, and I'll create another line. And, and you kind of kind of do this step by step. Split body. Grab it. Boop. Draft. Oh, I thought I'd put it away. There we go. Draft. So while you're doing that, yep. and how did you happen upon this technique? Like, how did you learn this? um through failure like trying to tr trying to do things the what i would say were the more intuitive way and finding out down the road when i went to make an adjustment that fusion didn't want to adjust so if i had done this as a as one curve right out of the gate if i wanted to you know maybe it's later on when we go to bevel the edges um something like it, it consistently happened enough where I found that if I don't start from nice right angles and square edges, as you progress through the design, uh, Fusion is more likely to get angry about the math that it's using. When it knows it started as a as right angles and straight lines, it, it seems to be able to manipulate and things and calculate further. Mm -hmm. All right, so we've done our bevels. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and combine this stuff back together. Just like that. And now I can go in. And this is another, well, let's start here. Uh, sometimes you're tempted to grab all the lines like that and then grab your, um, your fillet. And you can kind of bend them together. Sometimes you get lucky and that works. But uh, it's better to do them one at a time. You're not saving that much time. But the control you lose isn't worth it. Okay, so, and that doesn't look too bad. And now we can come up and do the uh, the other parts of these. Same kind of thing. We're just going to put fillets on these these corners that I created. And just kind of bend the wood. Yep. This is this really is one of the the most fun uh like Joe vehicles. Uh it probably perfect for mail away because of the the size. It ends up being 13 different pieces. So it's actually there's a lot more going on than than you kind of realize. It's got more pieces than a his tank, you know? Yeah. Wow, really? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, oh, yeah. it's, a, yeah. Bunch, it's a bunch of pieces. Um That looks good. So now I'm just going to do a mirror, grab that, tell it which plane that one and it wants to join, and that's fine. And boom, we've got our board just like that. So <clears throat> this is where it would potentially, and this is a simple enough shape. It might not have been a big deal, but uh, if I just, if I grab these edges so I can do my fillet, this, this is where. I could have already have run into trouble if I hadn't done it this way. What's mm -hmm. he doing up there? That's odd. Let's try it this way. Yeah, it doesn't like that corner. Let's 
So there we go. So all right, let's blow this thing up to to our uh, one to one, and we can go paddleboard. That's right. Uh, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not sure what kind of filament you want to use. All right, so that is that is the thing. I'm curious. I don't think any filament floats. Well, that I've heard of. Yeah, no kidding. So you could create a hollow inside. Hollow point, yeah. And then and you get some of that spray foam, foam that you yeah, use for insulation. Yeah. Fill it with that. Then it'll float, and it'll be stronger if if the foam expanding doesn't destroy it. Blow it. Yeah. <laughs> But whatever filament you use has to be able to handle the sunlight. So we're talking, uh, t shoot, not PLA, not TPU. The stuff that gets real stringy. Oh, um, I know it, it, it heat it heats up at a at a higher source. Yeah. Um, higher heat. Okay. Let's go back. So now we're going to do the uh, the outrigger. Same same process. Um, have we had any, any like good chat questions yet? Uh, no. Nope. Uh, okay. So so Ben just responded. P E T G is the pet G. Pet G. That's pet it. G. That's it. Thanks, that Ben. I was really thinking it was. I would have. It would have popped out as soon as I drew a blank. Um, that's interesting. And then the next question is, what do you make the sale out of? All right. So I had started this at what I thought was half. And what I want is to be able to have a straight line. So if I put this on this, you see, I, I put the cursor there and it gives me like a little square. So now mm -hmm. I can have this, this dotted line so that up here, it'll snap to it. And it's not very half. And that's just part of the that blueprint imperfection nonsense. Uh, I think we decided this was like a 3.5. So hit E for extrude, we'll go 3.5. Is that right? Right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. You, you just okay. made a good point. I think it's worth pointing out to anybody that, that might be new to be trying to do this is the blueprints are not accurate to the toy. If you try to do this, if you try to replicate based on the blueprints only, most of the time, it's not going to quite line up with the toy, and it had to do with the design process that they were using. And you're you're going to find out right away when something you're something is supposed to meet, and and it's off. Like if you're designing from the top, and then you go to the side, uh, you're going to find out that the, they don't line up. Yeah, like you're not you're not going to get to the point where you're printing it before you discover like something's afoot. You're going to find out pretty quick. So following along, you're doing the same process with the smaller board that you do with the first one. Correct. And it's, yeah, I, I really should have pulled that over. So I'm going to, I'm just going to grab this face and I'm going to uh, offset the face a bit because it's really not even close to half. So we're going to just pull it out a bit like that. Great. And now when I do the mirror on this one, um, I select the body and then for the mirror plane, I select that face. Yeah, face. Yep. yep. And then it's already it's on join. Now, if you watch me before, I usually try to make sure it's not on join. Uh, if there's other pieces around, and you hit join, if it's touching anything else, when you then hit OK, it all gets fused together. Yeah. So you um, right. and sometimes it doesn't, and I don't know if it's a change that Fusion made. I noticed it recently, but it's sort of this is that workflow thing. Uh, doing the, the right steps the right way in the right order. Um, typically, I would always just do new body and then join these two. But there's nothing else, anything anywhere around here. So join's fine right now. But that's one of those things you want to really be careful of. And I definitely don't like what just happened up here. Let me see if I can, if I can fix this. Oh, yeah. That's acceptable if this will work this way. Cool. Damn it. 
Now, do you ever do you have luck with mirror mirroring working to modify only one side? My my experience has always been I can I take a part, I make half, I mirror it, but then any editing to it only ever occurs on one side. One I don't side. get that benefit of no. That's weird. I wonder if 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 it wasn't joined. That's the only way I would think that would happen okay. is if there was somehow there were like if you didn't mirror if you had drawn it and mirrored um, like an X, Y, Z plane versus one of the sides. Um, so there was like a super teeny tiny little fucking gap between the two pieces so that they okay. didn't join because mm -hmm. you can tell it to join. And if it isn't actually touching, it may look like it did it, but it didn't. Right. So what I forgot to do is add the the lip on the front the of the, the outrigger. Yeah. Yep. Right. So let me let me knock that out real quick. So just like before, we'll create sketch. Yeah. So we we actually have a, a good question coming in from the from the chat. Yeah. Uh, and this is this is one that we've talked to about multiple times, but it's good revisiting. What about doing a scan of each piece and then modifying? So. Arthur, you want to you want to jump all over that one? So, um, so I only do that in uh, when when it comes to sculpting, trying to do hard lines of a scan. I've never really done. I've done like a couple weapons that way, and I I just never liked it and went back and redrew it anyway. Um, it's doable, but. I think in the end, the amount of work that you're going to do, you'll you'll find that you're almost going to go back and redraw the whole thing anyway. Does that make sense? Yeah, my my scanning experience for hard surface, um, like this the scans are are rarely, if ever, cl that clean. If you have a nice scanner and you're set up and you're good at it, you can probably pull that off. But like, I know the scanner I have is is a hunk of crap. Um, uh, I mean, you you can get a decent enough scan where the 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 sizes, the lines, dimensions will be about right. Like like I've I've scanned stuff so that basically I know the sizes and dimensions will be right. But as far as all of your lines, you're gonna have to go back and redraw a lot of stuff. Yeah, and that file you're getting from the scan, whether it's an OBGA or an STL, is not going to allow you the level of control. Like I'm, I'm able to yeah, grab these exactly. edges and do all this stuff. Exactly. You can't do that with an STL. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. If in the end, yeah. you'll really kind of wind up redrawing. You just kind of use this. You would use the scan as basically a definite guide for your dimensions. Yeah, and I think uh, one of the, the basic things that we've talked about a lot as well is, is scanning is not easy. Scanning is its own learning curve. It has its own challenges. And, you know, we, we've gone in depth on scanning before. And it's certainly, uh, especially for organic items, for copying, you know, anything that's sculpted, scanning is great. But even then, there's a lot of cleanup that has to be done. You know, and until you know, until you get into some of the really high-end jewelry scanning, you're also yeah. not going to get the level of detail that you really are going to want. Yeah. All right. So uh, we're going to do the mast, and the mast is the kind of the, in my opinion, the trickiest part of this whole thing. So, on um, the toy I have, Mike and I were talking about this. On the toy I've got, can you put me up? Uh, yep. So yep. the mat, the mast has got this little bit of a bend to it. Uh, Mike's is straight, um, but I would I draw your attention back to the um, the blueprint. Even on the blueprint, that mast has that bend to it. Bend to it, yeah. yeah. And I think like this is the toy that floats. This is this is our this is our display piece, right? And it looks so much more dynamic with that bend 
on the sail. If this was straight up and down, it would really look very static. Yep. So I really want to make sure I get this bend. And even like the sail, um, the pattern for the sail is kind of set up. With a little it's curve. set up. Yeah. Um, I don't know how well you can see this. It's set up with those with those holes. It, it, like this, the front edge of this thing has that curve already kind of built in. So we want to make sure we get that bend. So this is a circle, thicker at the bottom, thinner at the top. And uh, what should work, and we're going to do this the wrong way the first time. Um, I should be able to uh, do my sketch, grab my circle, uh, blam. Let's get rid of these bodies. Grab that, extrude. Go up. Mm -hmm. Now, what we would want is to do a draft and give that like a, I think like a minus one. That might even be too much. Yeah, minus 0.5 maybe. Yeah. And that's not terrible maybe like a minus 0.7 yeah we'll call that minus 0.7 okay cool we've got that taper going on but now how do we get that curve and i have no idea like there's no way to just take this straight pipe and bend it yeah so, so go ahead if i could throw something out there i would have approached it differently well like i said i was doing it the wrong way to just oh, okay all right, then we'll go into the we'll go into the right way. Let's, let's see. Well, and so this is this is the thing. It's like it's just not it's just not an intuitive way to do things. Yes. So, um, we'll do a we'll do a drawing. Um, and again, we could be tempted to try and grab this find this spline thing, and kind of go up the middle of what's here. And that's, that's, I think we can agree is the shape, right? Yep. Uh, so now we can, uh, we sketch uh, and we'll create a pipe for that and we'll make it a square. Um, we could do a circle uh, if you want to see how to not do this correctly again, but because this is now, um, make this like a five. Uh, because this curve is here, we're not going to be able to to do the draft the way we want. I'll be, if this is suddenly works, I'm going to be pissed. Yeah, see. So we go minus 0.6, and I'm just getting an. I don't know if you guys can see it on the screen, but it just gives me an error. Okay, okay. it will not do the error. Will we'll not, do it. Yeah, it will not do the draft. So again, that's no good. Don't well, do we, a circle. Do a what we square. definitely do is this, a pipe with a square. Okay. Uh, cool. Okay. So, hmm. so this is still wrong. I'm oh, sorry. So, from this. Um, what we could do is draft that side and that side, but we're not able to draft um, front and back. Okay. So th this is just, it just mm -hmm. doesn't work. I'm gonna remove that. So what we can do is keeping in mind, we want to make sure we've got the same we, we want to make a note of what is the size at the bottom and the size at the top. And we're going to draw the shape with lines. So I can come here. Uh, we're going to call that 6.5. I said 6.5. There we go. And we'll draw this sucker out. Um. See, I'm 
I want to make sure I, I get this right. And we're going to call that 2.6. Jesus, dude. 2.6. Oh, my yeah. God. Where's it going? Uh, I, I keep fat fingering stuff. <laughs> 2.6. What was the other mention? 6.5? 6.5, yeah. For anybody that may be just watching and seriously trying to follow along, it's the trial and error and trying to figure out the best way to get stuff done the way you need it done. This part right here winds up being so frustrating to me. Yep. So we're going to do symmetric and uh, 6.5. Half of that's going to be 3.25. Right. So, that's, so now we've got a square here mm -hmm. but we've also got a shape that we can uh work really work with yeah okay. so just like before we're gonna grab these and we're gonna round it up uh do i want to do this now yeah this this won't hurt anything so we're just gonna bend these in and just make a nice clean looking shape Really, anywhere there's any of those lines, we definitely want to, even if it doesn't seem like it needs it, you want to make sure you give it just a nudge. Just a nudge. And that way, when we go to round the edges later, it'll kind of daisy chain along and not come to an abrupt stop. Hmm. Yeah, see, these are the things. First of all, this needs to be a little bit more intuitive. But these are the things that just would have taken me like a, a solid hour just trying to figure out. And I was out like, in all honestly, I was really proud of myself on this one because I didn't even try those two things I showed you the wrong way to do. Mm -hmm. I didn't even try to do those when I when I did this the first time. Like I just, I just knew. Well, so yeah, I definitely would have taken uh, the the circle and and extrude it and did it the wrong way first. I'm sure I would. Yeah, I've never, I haven't tried anything that's circular and curved, so I don't know if it would have worked, but I would have used a different technique here. But that's it. That's just the beauty of it. There's more than one way to uh, come at it. There's a, there's a phrase, there's a phrase that I just don't remember. It's like more than one way to skin something or skin a cat. Skin a cat. There you go. Yeah, it's going a chonky tank kitty. <laughs> there you go. So, do you, you want to try a, a quick experiment, Mark? Absolutely. It work? So, just, but just for the, just let me finish this and then we'll we'll do it. Sure. Okay. Um. So I went in and I did my draft on the right and left sides. So we're we're pretty close to a square here, um, clo close enough for me anyway. I'll grab these edges, and then we'll hit the fillet, and I can see they all run all the way down. And we bring it in, and notice we still have a lot of square here. So what we, in fact, have to do is one at a time grab them and then do variable. And then we're gonna kind of eyeball this to about halfway. Do the same down here. Uh, we've got this uh, center line there, there we go. So less of a guess, let me double check the top. Cool. So I can make a note. Um, one is 1.376. The other is 3.245. And uh, there's a good chance those numbers will just work for all of them. But we do have to do them one at a time. Go variable again. And that should be... three point. Two point five. Oh, other one. 
3.2.4.5. And it doesn't like that. So we'll wiggle it back a bit. Yeah, so, so Ben does have an interesting question. He says, so does Fusion 360 not have a curve mess, uh, curve mesh function like Blender does? Curve mesh function. So the, uh, possibly over in the mesh tab. I mean, this is airing out. Uh, so we do have a mesh tab that lets us do some stuff smooth, but it's, it's more for, um, like if I had created, um, a, a form versus, uh, a, sh a rigid shape. God damn it. Okay. So it didn't like the 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 uh numbers. It didn't like the numbers. And it, it's because my shape at the top is not a perfect square. Okay, gotcha. And I had a bit more, uh, a more drastic bit of curve down at the bottom as well. So, but we, the, you know, um, trying, uh, trying to do this quick for the sake of the stream. I mean, the, the stuff I'm trying to explain is really the important part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, eh, a little ugly, but you get the idea. But we, we have our, we have our round curved tapered mast. So Mike, what did you want to try and do? So the way I would have tried it is to do a drawing uh -huh. of the mast, thinking, following him on one edge, and then coming back down at the halfway point of the mast, and then doing a rotate around the axis. Uh, okay. and I'm oh. not sure if that works with it curved like that. Yeah, I don't think it will, because it doesn't have a single line to pivot from. It would, it would well, end up no, like flowering would be out. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not sure if it would work, but that would have been the the experiment that I would have tried. <coughs> Be interesting if it would do it. And I, yeah, that's not really a function that I mess with. Um, let's get with the. So you, when you're saying drawing, you're talking like like just like the line, yeah, like the line, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, so I would just draw like, like a fit point, like, like this, uh, let's see. Yeah. Yeah. So I would, you know, I would follow the, yeah, pretty much like that. And then take it back out to the, the outer side. What do you mean? Of the mast. So, so create a shape that's half of the mast. Okay. Like that. Gotcha. Yeah. And then. Think of that now. You would want to then make that line parallel, but going down the center of the mast. Uh, we want to create a solid shape that represents so half, half, half of the mast. I gotta, I gotta blow my schnoz. Hold on. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I do it a lot for straight items. I just don't know if it would survive. Yeah, we do it for the curve. Yeah. So when, when you create a sketch like this, um, mm -hmm. before you hit finish sketch, if you grab it, you can do a move copy. Okay. Click create copy and. Okay. Yep. And then now you'll just want to seal it off by 
sealing the top and the bottom with lines so that you get the solid shape. Okay. Okay. All right. So now it's blue. Yep. Now, click it. Yep. And go over to uh, create. And there should be rotate. Re revolve. Revolve. Yep. Okay. Now click the click the inner mark part of the shape. Okay. So now it's already clicked. So now you're selecting your axis. Select the inner line can't, of that. And let's see. Can't grab it. Can't grab it. No, because it because it's a curve. It it can't be an axis. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Work. It was worth checking out. Yep. I'll play around with that when I open up my uh, uh, later when I can open up mine. Sure. Okay. So uh, look, we're almost done already with these three basic things. Yeah, was the big pieces. Yep. <laughs> uh, I didn't just wiggle that thing out of the, no. Um, all right, so we'll do the, what are the outrigger supports, I believe they're called, uh, these two shapes. We'll knock them out. So let me measure. Oh, I got the wrong damn thing. started measuring the three printed one I'd already done. <laughs> okay, uh, about 45. And seven. So I'm just, I have the dimension, so I'm just going to kind of center that up. There we go. Okay, for the sketch. And we'll do an extrude. And it is 7.5, just about. And this is definitely a new body, because we're not trying to cut anything right now. And uh, what we want is for this... Um, it's going to have a, a notch that it slips into, but there has to be enough space uh, underneath it that, that there's a little post that's going to come out and it needs to be able to grab and there needs to be enough material left for it to do that. So I'm moving this, uh, oops, wrong thing. What did I say, 7.5? body okay and grab this thing and move it i'm moving this up to about halfway and that way there's enough meat underneath it for for the post to grab onto later and now we can grab these two edges just do a little chamfer out there um, now we've got these kind of grooves through it and these are nice um engineering wise like this isn't just um to give it some detail so it's more interesting to the eye like these grooves that are in the top of these outrigger supports are going to help prevent this thing from from warping it's uh i don't know if that was their intent when they did the molding but i know if i do solid straight pieces like this in um dlp out of resin like they want to warp with all their heart um and so when you put grooves in it like this uh it helps prevent that from happening and there's a couple of interesting cuts um yeah i this one I'm just gonna kind of eyeball. Yeah, I was I was just gonna ask, where's the measurements, Mark? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's do my 
minus three. That's a lot. That's kind of a deep cut, but that's all right. And I'm doing that as a new body so that I can just duplicate it. Uh, so just do a move copy, we click create copy, and we slide the move it. Yeah. Like that. And then we just uh, grab our combine tool, grab that, and we'll hit the cut. Boop, boop, bam. And then there's some more cuts. And I'm going to do this at the level of the, at the board. So I'm selecting that face. And let me see. Make about right there. Boop. New body. Okay. And then same thing. We're just going to move it. Copy it, paste. Yep. And slide. Yep. And we're just trying to match it. That's our, our basic outrigger shape or outrigger support shape. So we still have to do the um, the plugs. But before we do that, we're going to create some cuts. Uh, so I'm going to grab this guy, do a move copy. Mm -hmm. Slide it on up. Well, I'm going to get it one of them out of the way. So I'll do minus 100 just so it's out of the way. And then because we have to do this four times. Uh, move copy. All right, so now we're going to grab these two, 10 and 16. Move copy, grab them, and move it like a nice even number. We'll just do 100 again. So that when we, uh, wrong thing, uh, we do our combine, I can cut these two out of this one. And then gotcha. when I move these two back, It'll notch into place. Correct. I got you. Mm -hmm. That's what I moved at 100. So minus 100. So now it's exactly where it was. So now we've got our, our cuts. And let me get rid of these canvases for a bit. Okay. Cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, you know, just working with negative space, that's pretty dope. Yeah, and, and there's, of course, there's more than way one way to do everything. And this mm -hmm. is probably like a holdout from the Tinkercad days of doing just Boolean operations to do everything. Yep. That's exactly how I would have did it, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what we're gonna also wanna do is give some tolerance in here. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna grab all of these sides So what we want to do is make these all these negative spaces slightly larger than the piece that's going to go into it because when this right. prints it the prints are going to grow so these holes are going to close up that outrigger support is going to get bigger and it won't fit so we can either print it as is and sand the shit out of it or i can build in the tolerance now by doing an offset face and so go ahead I guess my question would be, instead of doing it this way, when we made the the copies of the pieces, why not make those larger and then just uh, Boolean? Because we want them, it, we want everything to be symmetric. Okay. And so once when um when you scale something in Fusion, it doesn't scale evenly. Uh, I'll, I'll show you in a second. Um, 
Okay. It doesn't scale from the center point of the point. It doesn't scale from the center point. Thank you. It'll it'll gotcha. scale gotcha. off in a, a different direction. So things would it, things would be off if we did it that way. Yeah. Yeah. But um, gotcha. you could certainly do that. It's it's just your alignment might move because the part might you might be have lost. to adjust where the bigger part gets dropped. So I'm a fan of building in for something that's gonna that's should be tight about a tenth of a mil. So if I do a minus 0.1, that's about where I usually do things. Um, and I just know because I've already done this design and printed a couple, like it's gotta be tight if it's gonna really grab and hold on. So I'm, I'm gonna do this at 0 0.09 um, and, and it should be nice and snug. Uh, and and this is this is part of that material issue I mentioned earlier, where uh, whether this is resin or PLA or whatever, it's not the same as the injection molded plastic that the original toy was. And the materials we're using, as far as like as like like a Lego, because that's kind of what we're dealing with here is mm -hmm. is is Lego shapes that are going to plug in and need to hold, and and these materials aren't good at that because they just don't have the right strength and flex combination to do that well. Uh, so we, we know we need things to be tight. So let me move this piece back over. Uh, right about there, 100. So we come in and you can you can see I've got that nice even tolerance all the way around. Uh, and now we're we're gonna do a little bit of um, a, a fillet around a, all the edges. So here, here's a mistake that I used to always make is I'll go and I'll I'll start grabbing the lines that I want to put the fillet on. And what happens is if you accidentally click something or even click too fast or or wrong, it's not going to do it now. But what happens is you end up accidentally grabbing the wrong thing and you you lose it. So if you know you're going to be grabbing a bunch of lines to put a fillet on, you cl click the damn fillet button first. And now you don't have to shift and click. Oh, it's on variable still. You don't have to shift and click anymore. You can just, um, just, just, what is that? Left, left mouse click. And, and I still screw it up. <laughs> and it wants to be variable again. So back to constant. Uh, over here. Nope. So this guy. Yep. Tactical windsurfing. Like yeah, so ben ben actually ahead. just asked the same question about increasing the size of the cutter piece. So just to just to reiterate, uh, you could do it, but at least in Fusion 360, it's likely to throw your alignment off because there's not really a alignment. center point yeah. that it's going to scale from. So it's going to scale towards one side or the other. So yeah. if you want to maintain I'll, the original I'll, position. I'll demonstrate that in a moment. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, but great question, uh, Ben. Like, you know, when you're thinking as far as ease is concerned, it seems like that would be easier. But if it does throw it off, then that that is definitely the answer. So this is our, our piece that we want to see mm -hmm. if we could make it bigger. So we grab it and scale it. And if I, I know I want to... I, it's so kind I'm, of like, I'm increasing yeah, this I've, by a percentage, not a size. Mm -hmm, so, so that's mm -hmm. a, that's part of the trouble to start. Where I knew my tolerance, I wanted it to be 0.1 mil or 0 0.09 mil. Um, that's not how I'm moving this. I'm moving this. This is a hundred percent. And if I go like 1.01, .01, that's 101 okay. percent. Um, didn't didn't do much. So, like, if I click and drag, so notice on the left side. Like it closed up the gap, but on the right side, it hasn't. 
Right. Because it's not scaling from a center point. It's scaling from, well, it's scaling from somewhere, and I'm not sure what it is. But it's not scaling evenly. So it's, it's just odd. Yeah, it's, it's, it's odd. Really so odd. it's off. <laughs> you can see over here, it, it's, it's kind of right on. And over here, there's a, more of a gap. Where mm -hmm. if it was if it was scaling from like a center point, it should be even all the way around, and it's not. And that's right. that is the reason we didn't do it this way. Okay, yeah, that's just odd. <laughs> so I'm gonna grab the the same edges. I um put the fillet on. I just did the, the thing I said not to do. I just did it again. Uh, we're gonna point two. We got a nice even gap all the way around. So now we've got to do the the holes. Get rid of this guy for now. So uh, on the final file that I did, these aren't even. Um, on the on the original toy, these these pieces are uh, interchangeable in that you can flip them all over the place. Uh, my design, like I, I wasn't paying attention to it, um, so I learned after. We're gonna grab one of them grab our circle. Um, it's set for center diameter. Um, so when you've got a, a rectangle like this, you can easily, uh, because I clicked on this face as the place to draw the circle, I can come to the edge and it'll kind of do like a little snap when I get to the center point right there, right there. And then when I draw that out, boom, it gives me the center, which is really nice. Uh, the original toy has a three mil uh circle so we'll we'll go with that that's fine uh, and again this is going to get blown up so it's a fairly meaty little lego piece i just want to make sure that cuts all the way through it does um and doing that as it cuts just fine I'm going to real quick go and find the center of all these and put a three mil hole in each one. Sketch. My man. Don't embarrass me in front of my friends. <laughs> No worries. So again, grabbing that face enables me to find that center line. You got to, you, if, if I didn't find it along the edge, like I did, and I just started looking for it in the center, it wouldn't provide me that snap to center. You have to drag your car cursor around the edge and find that center snap on both edges before you do this. That's just something I would have never known. So thank you for yeah. that. Okay, I got all those. I hit E for extrude. I always like to do symmetric and make and see that what I'm cutting extends past both edges. And I think that's a, that's another holdout from Tinkercad where something looks like it's cutting all the way through, but you end up with like a 0 0.00001 millimeter little sliver. Um, yeah, at the bottom, and, yeah. And that's, that's, yeah, and that'll, you'll find out later and it's a pain in the ass. So, all right, we're gonna come down here. And those circles we drew still exist. So I, I just went to sketches and turned them back on so I can grab this guy. And it's at that same point. So I can grab it and just pull it down. 
and this is definitely going to be a situation where I want it to be a new body. And I don't want it to extend past. past. Right. I want it to be just a little less than flush. So we're yeah. definitely doing new body again, because otherwise it would immediately, it would just fill in this hole and connect the outrigger support to the outrigger, which is not what we want. So we do new body, we do that. And then let me put the outrigger away. So I don't even need the board for this. But you see, we've got our little, little tabby there. Mm -hmm. We'll do this one, same deal, but I'm going to bring the board back. So I have a, a something just a little less than flush, new body. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, we've got our outrigger support with our tabs. We're going to combine them. And I can put these sketches away now. So now um, this piece is supposed to be the same size as the other one now, right? Correct. And uh, it, it'll be fine. Uh, we'll move in a second, but I'm going to I'm gonna put in the tolerance on these. Mm -hmm. So we're going to, just like we did with the other thing. Oh, this is this is a good point. Oh, man, it's not touching. Right. But I look, so let's uh, grab these faces. Extrude up a little bit. Yeah, and we don't have to extrude. We can just do an offset face. Um, and then do our combine. So uh, where you grab, when I select this piece, where I touch it with the cursor before I go to do the offset face, where I touch it will dictate where the handle is to, to slide it. So if I click on the center of it and I come up to offset face, I can't even see the damn arrow because it's right where I clicked. Okay. If I hit it on the side over there and hit offset face, now my arrow is where I can actually see it. Gotcha. Okay. That drove me fucking bananas <laughs> for a long time. And, and, and I'm, yeah, sometimes you got to just grab it so it knows. So it's minus 0 0.09. And that's our, our tolerance. I'll put a little, uh, go away. Put a little fillet on at the bottom here just to make it a little cleaner. All right, so now let's bring these boards back. And we will do a copy. And what we want to make sure with this copy is that uh, the circles line up with each other. So that's off and that's off. So no, no bueno. What? Why? Um, because 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 the centers aren't the same. Clearly, that's not how I did it. The, yeah, the centers of the squares are not the same. I think is <laughs> yeah. So easy e easy enough. Like I'll just uh, close this guy up a bit. Close this guy up a bit. Uh, grab this guy, do our copy. Okay. Oh, it didn't let me do okay because uh, you already put a fillet in it mm -hmm. yeah face yeah Ugh, punks <laughs> uh. so we'll do offset face drag that through okay um and we just need to do that twice Kind of. So I'm going to split that. There, again, there's a thousand ways to do everything. Uh, split body. 
So in theory, that's it. Uh, let's move this. So in theory, that should work. Boom. Look. Yeah. But uh, the holes are too small now. So I have to make those holes just a little like, bigger. Like, like a little bigger. Here, here, off the face. Nice point. Cool. Okay, that was a really roundabout way of doing that, but it's done. <laughs> uh, you know. So the way these were molded, and I did this on the other design too, is um, I put a bit of a draft on the, the sides of this. I didn't, when did I do that? Oh, I wait, because I rounded it. Never mind, I'm not drafting this thing. Okay. Um, but look, it's almost done, because blah. Oh yeah, you just got some details. <laughs> nah, yeah, it's just the details. <laughs> Ship it. Right. <laughs> that's the part that's going to take <laughs> we're, we're, an, we're an hour in and we've got like two popsicle sticks and a straw <laughs> hey, but uh, that was a complicated straw it was well you know it, it's always like so much faster and easier like when you're not being watched um yeah Well, those were kind of the main issues, though. Yep. The, the rest of this is is kind of detail work, actually. Just details: the missile, the dog bone, and then and, then, and, and what's that. great about this one? Th this one isn't even a dog bone; it's just a a tab because we've got okay. gravity working for us, right? It's sitting, right. It's sitting yep. on it, not hanging from it. Right. So it's it's um as as missiles go, this is like one of the easiest ones yeah uh but i do want to do the nose cone just right um so i see a lot of guys do like a really sharp tip and it's uh it's just not the right way to do it so why not yeah uh, so so this is definitely a case where i would have done the revolve oh really yeah so what i would have done I what, I, what like i would do in this case is i would do the drawing of half the missile Follow the curvature of the missile down, and then just do a revolve around the center point. Okay. Um, yeah, that makes sense. I like to do. I you know I've got my way. Mm -hmm. But the, like, no kidding. The tip is the part that drives me nuts when I see designs where like the they haven't done their due diligence to make the tip kind of rounded like that. And it ends up to me not looking right, especially when it's really sharp because printers don't like to make sharp edges. And it ends up just to me not looking right at all. Uh, so we've got uh, like this, the stabilizers on this thing are, I mean, they're on the actual toy. They're just, there's just nothing there. There's, um, it's just like a plastic brick piece sticking there. Uh, let's get rid of some stuff. So I'm going to draw it from, from the circle as my spot. I can grab my rectangle tool and I use the center rectangle. I find the center of the circle and I can just do that. Do an extrude. Um, not joining. I'm doing a new body. I grab that edge. 
we're just gonna kind of tweak it out till we're till we're happy with where it lands. What we've got, yeah. Uh, it's not bad. So I'm I'm often tempted to um to do like a draft so that it's thinner up at the top than it is at the base. Uh, the subtle little things like that the printers don't like. Like the actual machine will will put when you've got like a near ninety angle, you'll end up getting these like really obvious layer lines. Mm -hmm. So I, I find especially something like this where it's so small. Uh, there's just no reason to do that. I am going to do a little bit of a, a fillet just so it's just nice and clean and easy. But that that's as much detail as, as this fin uh, deserves. But what we'll do is create a pattern on a circle grab this guy we'll select that is the axis we make it four and that's it now we just need to group it all up blam and that's kind of it now in the blueprint it's got um a little bit of detail you can see there's, there's these lines um that that's easy enough we can we can do these real quick but the, the toy does not have that. But I like panel lines. I think they're, I think that really adds a lot visually. Uh, this is a pretty thick withdrawn there. Um, panel lines, I usually do like a 0.3. I'm going to do 0.4 on that uh, because we're going to be making this bit. It's going to end up kind of, kind of actually thick when, after we blow it up. But I'll double click on it, do a move copy. And now we've got like a symmetrical, you know, they're both, you know, quick, easy. Um, and then we'll do a split face. I don't think, yeah, we can only do one at a time. Uh, nope. Split face. Uh, and because they were both part of the same drawing, once I used it, Fusion put it away for me. So I just have to turn it back on. And then because you, deliberately turned it on. It won't put it away again. Do a little offset and let's do like a minus 0.4. Okay. And then I'm, we're going to grab these edges and just do another fillet just to clean it up. So now we've got a little bit of detail on there. Nothing too fancy. Okay, so uh, we're gonna do a similar thing to what we just did with the fins. I'm gonna use that as the center point. So the what what Artona called the dog bone earlier. Um, we want that to hit the center uh, of the the shaft of the the missile, and the only way to find that is kind of this way. So I can draw this out. So we know it's running right down the center of where I have this thing. I can just put the missile completely away. Um, so. I, you know, again, there's 50 ways to do this. It's it's easier for me to work with shapes than it is drawings. So I could have moved that drawing and, and reshaped it to make the thing that I wanted, but it's, it's, I find easier to work with the shape Same. versus, versus the lines. Yeah, it's that Tinkercad turning. Yeah. Same. Uh, and here's something I like to do is I can turn the opacity down on a piece so I can see where some you can barely even see it. 
uh, I know I, I want it to land about right there. So that's my piece. I, I can connect this to the outrigger, but I also need to cut the shape out from the from the missile. So we're going to do that same thing again, where we do a move copy. Just do like minus twenty. Okay. I'll combine these guys. I'm gonna put this back. And then now you'll need to make that smaller a little bit. Yep. Um, before I do that, I'm going to round this out. Yeah, point two. Point two is like a nice. Now, hypothetically, doesn't that already make it smaller? No, it ma it makes the it just makes the corners come in, but it's still parallel. Parallel too fat. Okay. Yeah, you, you can you can see it, it it comes in on those corners, but it's still mm -hmm. that edge is touching that edge is touching that edge yeah. is touching. So th that's what I need to fix, and I've got it selected so. We'll do minus point one, which seems like a lot. We'll do minus point eight. Nope, 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 nope. Zero eight. There we go. And I'll do that same. Point two. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. For my own sanity, from time to time, I like to go up and um, put this on render and then change the colors of a couple of pieces. It just makes it just easier for my brain to kind of distinguish. Okay. Uh, so let's do paint, glossy, paint the board. Oh, is that working? And then if you want to tweak things better, you can double click and go in and anyway, it's it's for me, it's easier for my brain to look at it this way. <coughs> uh time wise, where are we at? Oh, uh, an hour and twenty minutes. Yeah, in. yeah over an hour, yeah. Crushing it. Absolutely crushing it. <laughs> <laughs> in six more hours, we should be done. Oh, uh, I will. I'll quit before then. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not worth it. It's that's only. Bad. That's. It's. Only, I'm only kind of kidding. I'm, uh, uh, so what do we want to do? I think the boom. I think boom is next. Yep. And the boom is the the piece here along the the sail that the operator hangs onto for dear life. So this is along that center again. Um, I'm trying to remember how I did this the first time. I, I think I think just like the sail, I kind of just drew it in, and it's definitely off center. Should I adjust the? No. this again see see how um i come to the center line and there's no kind of snap or anything i yeah. kind of mentioned this before if i touch up here and i get that box 
now it'll it'll snap into into place. Okay. A little bit of a question on the side, Mark, that came into yeah. chat is, uh, what paint and clear coat do you use for your prints? Um, I always prime, and I use uh, more often than not. I use um the GW, the Games Workshop primers. They're hard to find and they're expensive, but they're very opaque and very fine. So a lot of, especially white primers will have like a, like a chalkiness to it, like a real tooth and it's too much. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I find the GW paints don't do that to me. Hmm. Okay. Um, so I prime and then uh, kind of, I have a couple different airbrush paints I use it, and it depends what I'm doing. Uh, but I use a lot of the army painter and that's just because uh, I got started using it and then never left. I'm not a big fan of the GW, the Games Workshop paints and I forget what their, the proper name for them is. Um, but army, the army painter, I use that a lot. And they have, um, they have a line of airbrush paints now uh, that I don't mind, but there's also, you can buy airbrush medium with it, which is maybe not necessary, but it's easy. And then, um, I use, uh, I always use like a, depending on the thing, but more often than not, I use a clear matte uh, spray to kind of protect everything and make it less susceptible to like scratches and blemishes. Everybody likes using matte. I like the clear matte. I don't, I've used it, but I guess it's just more for protecting than anything. Mm -hmm. And especially like if you're going to be taking any kind of pictures or anything, you don't necessarily want something glossy that's going to just, you know, do a bunch of reflecting that you don't want. Um, sure. the, the other part of that, though, is like I've started getting um, stickers made and the clear stickers I'm getting are very glossy. And so if mm -hmm. I know I'm going to put uh, these glossy stickers on it, I'm not going to spray it with a clear mat. I'm going to spray it. I'm either going to paint it with a gloss like spray or or mm -hmm. coat it with um, a clear gloss so that the stickers don't won't pop yeah, too they, much. Yeah, so they, they blend yeah. in instead of kind of popping. Yeah, exactly. Right. So when um when you've got when you're trying to put a curve on something and um like if if you have a right angle and you select that corner and then go to put the fillet in there like it's it's a real easy you'll right away notice the change but when you've got two lines that are only like a two or three degree difference you kind of need to really pull to to get the uh that curve in there hmm. Uh, huh. what i just realized that this whole time we've been showing we've been showing your cad work but not our ugly mugs uh oh so i have fixed that cool now everyone can see my ugly mug that's awesome exactly exactly hey everybody we were on there before i think i at, at some point i did a maximize on your screen and sure the uh the smaller pictures away and viewer count just went down by 10. Sweet. Did it? No. <laughs> I was like, that's everybody. That's the whole. <laughs> yeah, so I, uh, like I was telling you guys, I had my, my COVID cherry finally got popped this last week. So I've been just sick as hell. And then, uh, just blowing my nose. I kept getting like snot in my facial hair and like it, you, you can get a tissue and wipe it, but it still feels wet. And like you kiss your wife with like a wet oh, snot mustache. Like it's only funny the first like six or seven times. 
<laughs> and then, uh, so I sort of rage shaved and I regret the hell out of it. <laughs> so I create a mirror. So just like what we did before, we're just mirroring that and it joined no problem there's my cool all right uh so so we are building this to be collapsible just like the original toy um and I'm there's no way I get to it today. Um, it'll but when I put the file out, I'll have the uh, the backpack piece and the, the stuff to will technically fit inside it, and you can open it and close it, and it'll have a peg and you can stick it into a, a figure's back. But it is it is one thousand percent ridiculous looking. Um, it reminds me if you've ever seen like uh, Monty Python on the Holy Grail, they all had their like uh, their companions that were carrying all their shit. And it was just like this, just carrying this mountain of stuff. That's what it looks like to me. So, <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, I think because we're we are all three D printing this thing, um, ultimately, uh, I th I think it's appropriate to have it glued together. That's where I was going with all that. So this is this is um there's a peg that will run through a there, you know there's a support and a hole in the mess here, and a peg from the boom that runs through it and that's how it, it holds on. So that's what I'm making now. It's just this peg. Hmm. So this is interesting, and I hadn't really thought about it. I, I th and I think I designed it kind of this way before too. I'm gonna move this whole damn boom closer to the mast. It's another one of those things where the, the blueprints kind of lead you a little bit astray because we want that to be pretty snug right there, but not too snug. What are you noticing? Uh, so there, there's, I don't know if you'd call it a cullet. There's um, the mast bulges out right there. Uh, like that. that. That hole right there is where it goes through. But it has to also not be so wide that the boom rubs against it on the outside. And the way yeah, I've, so. I've done this is a little, it, it looks tight. Yeah, I'm, I'm regretting um, having pre-designed it once. Like, I did it once because, I, like, what usually happens is we do the stream, and I tell everyone I'll make the file available. But then I, because it's me, I need to test print it, and blah, blah, blah. And it ends up being, like, a month before the file's done, you know? And I wanted to be able to, like, when we were done today, I want to put the file out there and then never think about it again. So I made sure I already had it done. Um, and it was easy as hell the first time. And I feel like I'm, I'm struggling more this time than I did the first time. <laughs> uh, so what we will do is grab this guy and kind of like we did before. I'm going to make a copy, move it out of the way. All right. Some days are better design days than others. Yeah. Some days you just wake up and you're smoking. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's a that's a, it's a thing. Like no shit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I definitely like will have a project I'm working on that I just I just get hung up on it and I'll I need to just do uh, something else. So right now I'm, I'm creating that that collar. And I'm going to create a shape and then cut that shape out of this collar. So we get rid of this. We can see what we're doing. Get rid of the mast. Symmetric. And then, OK. So so that it's an interesting little shape. Um, oops. All I'll do is, is that too tight? Nah. So I'll group these together. Uh, I'm going to bring this back, make a copy. And what I'll do is I'll make this just a pinch smaller. And that's that, that tolerance we keep talking, or no, bigger, pinch bigger. bigger. Yep. Yeah. Uh, let's go point one. Okay. And so I, I'm just curious. So is that point one just always work for you? Is that nope. like a sweet spot? Okay. Nope. Nope. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a good start. Okay. It's a good start. It's, um, yeah, no, I've I've I no goddamn consistency whatsoever. <laughs> yep. um, now keep in mind too, you're going to scale up for classified, so right. that one tolerance is going to become so it'll, that yeah, so that point that point one is going to become like a one will be a little point larger. one six right. something like that. Yeah, I, I was just curious that, like, if in, in general, had that had you discovered the sweet spot for tolerance for your your stuff? Yeah, and no, unfortunately, no, <laughs> unfortunately, no. It's it's pretty close, and uh, honestly, on this project, it was mostly too much. Yeah. Now, what's interesting is, will that even show up in fdm because i know with my printer the, the smallest size i can do that would make a difference is going to be 0.5 millimeters really? wow yeah. yeah and i i uh, did not have an opportunity to test print this in fdm okay yeah but I've, I've printed two uh with dlp now and they're and both like went together I didn't have to sand any of the connecting pieces. Everything went together okay. Okay. Nice. Um, I haven't had an issue with because I print ninety degree to the bed, and so a piece like this not so bad until you get up to where it starts to curve a little. Um, w where we've got this curve, like everything is nice and smooth, and once it starts to curve, we start getting those layer lines. Okay. Uh, so I had to I sanded that. All right, where are we at? I'm gonna do this. Um, I, don't, I forgot. I I need to add this to the the design before I call it a day. But the uh, it, it when, when I design these things for classified scale, I like to have a figure a specific figure in mind. 
um, when there's a backpack hole, when there, there's different things. And for me, this one was like shipwreck, right? And uh, what I what I what I realized was I should have put a hole at the top of the mast for Polly to peg into. Oh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna add that before I upload this thing for everybody. Nice. Let's get the uh, canvases back out. And we'll do this. You should also put a uh, a peg on the missile for Polly as well yeah so you can launch him <laughs> fast attack parrot uh, a lot of times when i'm doing something with the the circle tool um what i like to do is grab the two point circle because i can get a lot more control with it uh so in this particular case you you know you grab and you drag um it's okay. a lot harder to nail something in the center because it's really high, hard to eyeball something and no shit hit it in the center perfectly every time uh, so that's just another recommendation I have is just using the, the two point circle. Hmm. Okay. Uh, but I grab it. I have the width I want. I do a little move. I should change my angle and it'll turn right on the center line. Yay. Come back. And out there. Let's see. Do our extrude. And that's. Certainly good enough for government work. Make that a new body. Grab those edges, do our fillet. Boop. Done. So now we've got our top of the mast. And it, like that's actually a piece that makes sense to me because that looks like an antenna casing. Yeah. Where are we at on this thing? Uh details, right? right. Um I don't I don't know how much we're gonna finish finish. So let's let's do something interesting. Uh can you see that? Yes. So I know Mike, you were wondering about this, like how to bring in an uh, STL. Another not even an STL. Or a mesh. Another I file, see. yeah. Another file from Fusion. Yeah. Let me see if I can find this damn gun. So many guns. What's wrong with me? Here we go. Hey, we're getting a we're getting a Mark II design preview. <laughs> so uh, I've got the M32 over here. I'm just gonna drag and drop it, and it didn't like that. Is that what just happened? What did it say? Cannot insert external components into this design because it has never. Oh shit! So <laughs> I have to save the project we're working on. I have to save it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So this is uh, we'll just call this my Manta with a bunch of shitty caps. Yeah, let's call it stream. Oh my god, I hate the caps. It's gonna drive me fucking bananas. Stream. Save. Okay. Now I'll try it again. Drag and drop. Proceed. It's gonna take a second. And I haven't scaled everything up yet, so it's going to look way too fucking big. But there it is. We've got our M32 submachine gun. Okay. So I think in this case, it, it would be it would work different than what I was thinking because you have the master file that you were able to drop in there. Yeah. Uh, where so, I run into problems is if, say, I took that existing STL and mm -hmm. wanted to do the same kind of modification you have to import it as a mesh but i've never been able to make the two join together meaning okay mm. so let's let's do that then um i'm gonna open that i i don't know where i've got that stl saved so we're gonna yeah i maybe we don't go go into that we, no, let's do it. I mean, this is a, a demo. Like, okay. um, the main 
bits of what I wanted to make sure I showed today, I've already done. Okay. Um, so th this works for me. So we'll go bodies, uh, save as mesh. We'll do binary, like we talked about. Okay. Okay. Uh, where are we saving this? Save it in the Manta. Perfect. Two. Save. Okay, I'm gonna put that away. I just I just need to clean it up. Uh, so I know what I'm doing. Insert mesh. I'm gonna go find that damn thing. Here we go. STL. It comes in. Uh, is it okay? So we've got this mesh here. This is where we go up to mesh. See how we've got this warning? Mesh is not oriented. Mesh does not have positive volume. So something's wrong with it. it it's interpreted, even though it was made in Fusion and brought back into Fusion, it's interpreting it as having a hole somewhere. It won't hold water. Uh, there's this little button up here that says repair. We can hit that. Okay. And that should fix it. Okay, so that went away. Uh, so, but it's still a mesh. It's not something we can we can work with. Um, mm -hmm. So we're going to go to modify and convert mesh, and it's got more than ten thousand triangles, but it'll be fine. Hopefully, it, it's yeah. This should be okay. We'll hit okay, and hopefully this doesn't crash Fusion. Um, but it might take Fusion a minute or ten. To, to do this conversion. Okay. So we're going to kind of just stand by for a second. Okay. So that's okay. the step I was not aware of. Yeah. I didn't realize right. there was a convert step that you could do. Yeah. And it used, it changed. So okay. a year ago it was this whole thing where you had to turn your history off and, and it, you like eliminated your history and you had to like convert mesh to B rep. And it was this whole process. It's easier now. I still have my history, but now we've got something we can mess with. Okay, excellent. Yeah, and it's not perfect, um, but but we can we can now alter this, add to it, subtract from it. We can do our boolean shit, um, but it's not as simple as the other thing, okay. where I had just dragged it in. Mm -hmm. Here, let me pull that in. There it is. So th these are the these were the same file, these two things. But obviously, and yeah. but obviously you can see there's difference now. Uh, what what I'm gonna do with with this, and I talked to you about this earlier, Mike, is instead of like I'm going to put the STL files out, mm -hmm. but I'm also going to put out the step file, the STP or STEP files. When you import your step file into Fusion. This is what you're going to have. This gun at the top here, you'll be able to do do all all the controls you would normally have on your Fusion file. You'll have it. You okay. have a history, but you, this is what you're going to have, and you'll be able to manipulate the hell out of it. Unlike this STL file that we've converted. Right. Okay. Okay. Very nice. Yeah. So I'm curious. I, I'm 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 not committed to doing things that way in the future but i as a, a bit of an experiment i'm curious um what people do or do not do with the the step files that i'm going to make available so i like i don't even want this here so <laughs> i'm going to remove that okay but thanks for uh, showing me that that's great yep it's it's tricky. Um, you, like that's just a little gun. Uh, it's a mostly geometric shapes, right? Uh, and and it was well over ten thousand faces, which um, you know Fusion can handle it, but it doesn't like it. If you start putting in some real complex shit in there, you will crash the shit out of Fusion, mm -hmm. and like not even being able to open the file later, it'll it'll corrupt the whole fucking file. So you got to be careful with it. But that's that's how it's done. Uh, well, let's, uh, 
I guess we're going to do some detail stuff on the board. So one thing I definitely elected to not do um, was put the foot pegs. The, um, the toy has foot pegs for probably three different figures. And I don't know if that was part of their thing where they could say, holds up to three Joes. <laughs> um, but it's got foot pegs on here. The foot pegs on the classifieds are real inconsistent. And it's just not necessary because the classifieds can actually hold the boom where the um, the three and three quarter old school O-ring Joes, you know, they their hands just don't even face the direction they would need right. to hold any part of this thing. Right. So the foot pegs aren't necessary in my opinion. So I didn't do them. Uh, let's get rid of some of the mucky muck here. I definitely want to make sure I do the, um, the the bits on the mast that hold the sail. Okay. Dang it. There we go. I'm going to make sure we do those before we, we call this a, a day. But let's do some of the detail on the... Uh, I guess we also want to talk about your plans for the the sale itself, because you're not creating the sale; you're creating a uh, a, a stencil for the sale, right? Sorry, right. right. Yeah. So what I've done is, uh, I mean, long story short, I took the sale of the old one, I scanned it, I drew it in Adobe Illustrator, and created and blew it up and created a pattern, um, and then so that's a PDF file uh me that's a that's a good question because it's certainly going to come up uh sale pattern so i'm gonna i'm gonna print one out real quick and just hold it up and you can see what it is And I don't think you guys can see my screen, but uh, uh no, not no. your second screen. You bastard. So I have a what is this thing? A cannon. I have a cannon printer, a laser jet that uh just decides to not fucking work from time to time. So it's here, it, it's powered on, like it's good. But um, when I go into Illustrator and I hit print, usually like the first time I try to print after having like restarted the computer, it, uh, it doesn't show as an available printer. And then like, I do like a restart and it works every time, you know? Mm -hmm. hoping I can again I'm not restarting the computer right now it'd be real nice if the damn printer would just work when I want it to yeah you could try disconnecting the USB cable and let it re-enumerate uh, it's not even USB it's Wi-Fi oh, Wi-Fi yeah but I think it's I think it's working so we're good okay So I went to Joanne Fabric, as one does, and found just a uh, like a camo pattern on a light, not too flexible fabric um, that I was happy with. So then, so then this PDF will be just included with the um, the files. So this is your pattern, and you basically just tape this down on top of the fabric, get a sharp, sharp, sharp exacto knife, and cut it out. That's all you got to do. Just, just cut it out. Sweet. And, and then this is what you get. And then, uh, just like the old toy, it just, just plugs right onto the, the pegs on the mast. And it's good to go. All right. Uh, detail. We're going to start putting some of the board details down. So I noticed, um, looking at it, there's a couple of repeating things. Uh, there's these kind of like pins by all the outrigger supports. You, get, you can't quite see them on that because the boom's covering it. 
but trust me, they're there on the on the toy. So we do one of these pins and then we'll do like a copy and put them around. And then there's this other shape that appears uh, one, two, three, four, four times on the main board. Um, so same thing. We'll uh, we'll do one of those, do a mirror, do some copy and moving it around. Um, this is another one of those things like, you know, there's hundred ways to do it. Uh, I'll just create two shapes. A sketch. Uh, how do I want to do that? Let's do extrude. No, 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 no. Because I got that hole in the middle. Cancel. Split face, there we go. And I'll make that my spot. I hate I hate this thing that Fusion does where you can select a surface and then um it, it like moves the camera on you, whether yeah. you like it or not. That that drives me absolutely bonkers. It wastes a lot of time. Like I don't, I don't, I have no idea what purpose it possibly serves. To me, this is like the, the handle that you would use to pull this pin out. So right now, I made this two mil. It looks a little high. I'm going to go ahead and lower it. But the, there's a thing to remember when you're, when you're designing a fusion, especially I have this on orthographic, not on perspective. I think perspective warps things too much um, when you're designing. But, but what you lose is kind of the context of size. That looked like it was sticking up so much off of the face of the board but it was two millimeters it's just two millimeters like it's not that much and so th that's the thing where you kind of get used to uh what measurement means what in terms of relief from a surface yeah okay like what I'm clearly drawing over there. Like, why rotate the camera away? Yeah, it, it rotates and it centers for some reason. It go, it takes you to the origin. Uh, yeah. Sometimes it decides that it knows what plane you're on better than uh, than you do. Yeah. Which is always crazy. Uh, and another thing, and this kind of comes back to what I was saying before about the um, the the uncanny valley for for toy design. Uh, all these things were designed to uh, designed to and manufactured as a, a two part mold, and because of that, uh, you know that that's why when I when I do these uh, these fillets along here. Like that looks more correct because that's how it came out of the mold. Um, and a piece like this, like if I was making this to be molded, like before I, let me get rid of that. Um, before I rounded that even, I would have done a draft. I would have done like a one degree draft on that side and another one over here and another one here i guess i could have rounded it and then done it all at once but the, the point is um if i'm designing this to look like the original toy did it would make sense for me to design it as though even though it's going to be 3d printed if i design it so that it would work in a two-part mold the ultimate 
result, the look will look more correct um, when it's when the, when you get the final piece. If it, if you take the steps to design it like it was going to be manufactured the same way, do, do you understand what I'm saying? Does it make sense? If I design it for a uh, for a two part mold, even though it's going to be 3D printed, that final look will be more like the original look. Gotcha. And I think like the mass is blocking where that one would be, but I can do this one. Sorry. And then we've got like this weird soup can thing. I don't even know what this would be. Uh, let's do one of these. So I grabbed this face. At that line right here is where it starts to curve up. Um, but that's it's not a problem because it's gonna relief up so much it doesn't it doesn't matter. These are yeah, another two mil. It's kind of looking. Looking at the toy for a real reference. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely helpful if you have the actual physical thing. Some sometimes you're designing, you don't have it. Yeah, I like like the best case of that was that um like the MMS when we did the MMS, like I was so unhappy with how that thing turned out, and it and oh god damn it, Mark. <sighs> you know what? We'll just split body instead of face. I missed the edges, so it wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna be able to expand the faces like I wanted. But yeah, the MMS, I like. I had never owned one at that point, and um, I I went just from the blueprints, and it was just it just didn't look right. Yeah, the blueprints on that were pretty wonky. That was also the one that we <laughs> we we the. Depending on what picture you had seen, people built them different ways. Right. Yeah. Which, yeah. which way the, the missiles were oriented. Uh, and I think that was the day that I learned that I had been uh, displaying mine wrong for 30 Closing years. Closing it the wrong way. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even know what some of this, like, you know, they put these little greebly pieces on here for, for detail, and I, I don't know what they're supposed to be sometimes. So there's a there's a sound like this recurring sound I keep hearing, and it, I don't know if it's like a predator or a cockatoo. Oh no, those uh, are the uh, those are the golf carts rolling by. This is holiday weekend, so it's it, a 
it's action-packed where I live right now. So I, every now and again, I'm either muting so you don't hear it, or if, it, if it's low enough, I just let it go. <laughs> I don't know if that's what it is, the thing that I'm talking about. Because it's, it's odd, whatever it is. It's, it's happening in your system? No. I'm hearing it. It's like... I can't, I can't make the fucking sound. Is it inside the house? It probably. There's a predator inside my freaking uh, my shop here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We've got cicadas going crazy around here. Cicadas. Yeah. Do you have those out west? To an extent, yeah. Okay. Depends on where you are. That's not right, right? Yeah. I want to combine these mugs. All right, and we need to do the let's get some some mast work done. Uh, let me see, did the canvas no, I don't really do it too much justice. So I'm just gonna create these little pill shapes. Uh, let me grab this guy. Oh, all right. So at this point, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna just scale this whole damn thing up. Uh, so oh, okay, yep, that makes sense. Uh, I don't know if, if anyone has ever actually done this, but if you take um, six, as in six inches, and divide it by three point seven five, three and three quarter inches, you get like one point six. Mm -hmm. uh, so sometimes that works perfect. Sometimes you need to go a little bigger. Sometimes a little smaller, depending yeah. on, on the thing you're doing. Like the um the shark is way the crap off, um, because the figures don't proportionally scale. Yeah, like where where joints fall, where you know, like if you were to just make a three and three quarter inch figure six inches magically, like the hands aren't going to land in the same places. The proportions are all goofy. So something like this is real simple, and we'll do one point six, but. The, you can't always count on that to be the right number. Yeah, one one of the problems with classifieds is most of the figures are not six inches tall. No. They're closer to six and a quarter. Or six and, and six and a half. Yeah. Yeah. So that's I I don't know. I always I always have the worst time with GI Joe trying to discuss what scale it is because it's just all over the place. <laughs> Because, you know, when, especially when you talk to modelers and they're like, oh, what, well, what scale is G.I. Joe in? It's like, okay, well, the figures are this, but the vehicles are this. Yeah. So it's G.I. Joe scale. It's G.I. Joe scale. <laughs> yeah. Like, try to describe somebody what the scale of a Sky Striker is. Because if you try <laughs> to proportional, do a proportional model of that, no, you're not even close. Yeah. Well, like, there's other companies that do uh some of those birds that do like you know the f-14 and they actually do it actual 118 scale and it's oh yeah huge. It's, it's huge, huge. Yeah. yeah yeah the cockpit to plane ratio of the sky striker is uh it's a little bit off <laughs> to be kind. all right so what i'm going to do is pull in as a canvas my pdf pattern right. for the sale I think. So okay, you haven't scaled up the the thing yet. You're gonna pull pull in the canvas first. Oh, you did scale it up. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so what was the trick with this? Um. So just like before, we're gonna take a measurement from there to there, and. 
calibrate it. So this, the sale pattern is a, is a three and three quarter. No, it's no, it's, it's, it's the correct size. So if you printed that on a, that's an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper right there. Okay. Okay. And, so and you already scaled up for the PDF. Okay. That's what, that's right. What. But when you, yeah, but when you pull it into fusion, fusion's like, I'm going to make this fucking smaller and I'll make it whatever damn size I want. So okay. yeah, you can okay. see that's my scale. Yeah. So let me calibrate get this to this make the and you can you can already see there like and this is this was like a, I drew this directly on top of the scan of the original scale sale before I scaled it up. And you can see it's got that curve built in uh, to the original design. And that's not bad right there. Okay. So this is this tells us where those um, those holes need to land. So let me turn the mast off and turn the boom off and rename that real quick. Get that out of the way too. There we go. So that's where all those are going to land. And we know the, the, the actual plug that they're going to go around needs to be bigger than the hole so they don't just fall off. but it can be a little thinner. We don't want it to be too much bigger because we don't want to uh, tear this thing when we're putting it together. Just a nice little pill shape, and we'll put a um, a little like post on it. So this is one of those cases where we're going to be duplicating this. So we're going to get it as close to finished as we can before we duplicate it. So we don't have to repeat any work. So we're just going to clean it up a little bit. Okay, and I'll bring all this crap back. So I'm going to, so I covered up all the holes with masks. We're just going to reduce the opacity on the mask so we can still see the sail pattern behind it. Go 30. There we go. So that's okay. And we're going to want to, you know, take the time and kind of shape these to turn with the mast kind of right down that center line. I 
I always got to remember hit that create copy button. It's the worst when you go and you move something and you realize like, oh, I took the original and altered it. Yeah, I really wish they would just have a copy command. Yeah, it, oh, than the whole move and then remember to copy. I don't understand. Yeah, why it, you it's didn't do it that way. The bane of my existence. Yeah. So I know I've got one back here. So this one, just from before, I just know like it, it's got to be a little bit tighter than what it is on the pattern here, um, and it's because it's, this isn't actually the sail is not going to be at a ninety. It's actually it, it runs from this side and then it cuts kind of back and across. Okay, let me get rid of that. And I'm going to bring the opacity back up on the mast so I can see it. Cool. So now we just uh, make these adjustments over here. It's not bad, but I'm going to bring it in a bit. Cool. Now I just group all that nonsense. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, what are we forgetting? Oh, the split. Let's do that. Split for the mast and a split for the... Oh, the board. Yeah, no shit. Then, yeah, thank you. So we're going to do these two splits, and I think we're going to kind of just call it at that point. Um, what would be missing is just kind of detail on the surface of the boards. Um, and that's kind of it. And I'll pull up the... Um, before we leave then, I'll pull up the, the actual final design that um, I'm going to put out there. And we can kind of talk over that. So th this is interesting because the um, uh, I, I because I didn't do the split before, the canvas is no longer the right scale. It's not a big deal. But we've got this tapered curving piece here that we need to split. Um, which is easy enough, but we want to try and make this as close to like a 90 as possible, which is a little bit of a challenge. We've got that line there and you see it like, like that's a pretty drastic angle. Come on. There we go. Okay, so we've got that two different pieces. Uh, let me get the top half to go away. But we'll do this kind of like we would have done anything. And this isn't the, this, I did a terrible job right there. But by selecting that surface as the drawing point, it's going to angle uh, this to the camera so that. And then, what a pain in the ass. So that's kind of close to the, the center point. So we'll put our hole there. But because we've scaled it and we've wiggled it around, like this is, you know, I can no longer use the, the X, Y, Z as a center point for anything. So you got to be able to find and grab that stuff. Um, so you, you can see that's definitely off center. So if I can grab that center point, right click and hit move copy, I can click and drag this. So I'm not sort of eyeballing it so much as uh, I'm still eyeballing it, but I'm not like cancel. 
if I if I try to just do this with the mouse like this, there's a good chance I'm going to wiggle one way or the other versus using the the arrows. Does that any of that make sense? Yeah. I know I need to move it this way, and I don't want it to slide that way or that way. All right. So just you know, simple extrude. Uh, let me get that other piece back. Um, three mil. Three mil. So that's gonna be like four and a half mil. Or no, it's it, it is what it is. So let's do four. Do a cut. Um, we're gonna do some face cutting because there's a bit of a cowl around this thing. So again, we're gonna try and do pretty close to. Hello. Um, one second. So that was weird. So, uh, was it your predator or your ghost? What's that? Was it your predator? No, it was um a woman looking for the garage that used to inhabit this space. Huh. Like the Mark II toy sign out front that doesn't say Lions Den Garage isn't enough. <laughs> so we're gonna. Oh shit! I don't want to split. I want to split face. We gotta be because I've got this thing broken up in such a goofy way. We gotta just make sure we grab everything. All right, we'll grab this guy. Boom, blam. And we're gonna grow all this stuff out. Shit, I hate that when you're clicking, clicking, clicking. And it just decides to crap out on you. So while you're while you're doing this, Mark, can you talk to the uh, the amount of time it took for you to make the first one? Like how how long do you think it actually took you to do it the first time? Uh, it took me three hours and twenty minutes the first time. Okay. For the for the whole so, thing. Okay. So I'm, I'm looking, I see a couple, uh, not really questions, but statements to say, like, now I kind of get why it costs so much for, you know, design work or the, or the whole, when someone wants to charge what they charge for something, is they see how long it's actually taking to, to do stuff. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm tired, man. <laughs> well yeah i wasn't you, sick when, yeah. i wasn't sick when i did it the first time and then yeah you're recovering right yeah now. yeah uh so but yeah to, to that point to to add on to that one is you know it, the design definitely takes a lot of time and, and this is just i mean this is a very simple product uh following the toy yeah larger yeah this isn't this isn't a new design that i'm pulling out of my head yeah i have i have measurements i have blueprints i have every reference i could possibly need i'm recreating something that's already been done and like no shit like we like when we talked about it we're like what can we try and do and actually finish in a reasonable amount of time and this is this was the best we could come up with yep and it's it's hours and hours and hours yep yep and then even even uh, to follow up on the the comment is even after the stream, you know we're we're not going to finish this on the stream. There would be details, and then there would be tweaking uh, that you would have to do as you go to actually print the parts, and you feel realize that things don't quite fit together, that some parts need to be improved. So yeah, there's there's hours and hours invested just in something as simple as this. When you take a look at something like uh, how how much. How, how much time do you think you put into the hydro sled? 
Hydra sled was probably eight hours. Wow. All told. Um, and that was another one where you look at it and it looks like such a basic, and it is, it's a basic shape. I've got like a bit of an FDM print here. It's, you know, but then when you go to start putting the detail in, especially like, like this nonsense back here, you go putting that detail in, it's just like, and the hours just tick away. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I know there are some folks that are watching that are, you know, they're design masters in their own right. And, uh, you know, the amount of time you put into it, and then you have to sit back and think, now, how much am I going to sell this for? <laughs> it, you know, that it, it just becomes a quandary. Um, I, I lost my train of thought on this damn thing, quite honestly. So let's go ahead and we're going to skip ahead to the, the final thing. Okay. Pull that up. Uh, Manta. So this is going back to the one that you've already worked on. Yeah, this is this is the one, the first one I did before I was sick and my head wasn't all cloudy. Um, so this was the first. Oh, that's I was going to do that split. Yeah. But yeah, so this is this is the what I'm calling the final design. And it's it's pretty clean. Everything pr is very printable. Uh, you can see, I just this is what I had been working on when I quit just now. Just a simple little plug in here. Mm -hmm. um, th this split right here, the way this thing was designed originally, is just absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've just, I've mimicked that pretty close. Um, and it, it works. So I, the initial print, let's see, that's pretty tight. So uh, after I painted it, it was tighter. So it had a, a little more, a little more give before I painted it, but with the paint on it, it is that is just snug. That's really nice. So hopefully, hopefully the tolerances I have baked into this design right now as is work for everyone. I suspect that's not going to be the case. Um, and you'll need to tweak, maybe do a little sanding, or you can go into the actual because I'm going to give you guys the step file. So if you've got fusion, you can open that step file and you'll be able to tweak these tolerances yourselves. Uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah, good, fantastic design by the, uh, the eighties Hasbro team on that one. Um, I've got the pack here. Um, I've just created like the, the molded hinge where it just uses the, the natural, uh, flexibility of the plastic. Um, let me see, I have that thing here somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, we refer yeah. to that as a living hinge. Yeah, that living hinge. Um, that no way that works with a, a 3D print. With 3D so I've I've no. designed just a a simple little hinge there. I, I'm I'll be honest. I don't know how well that's going to work with um, FDM, but like DLP wise, like it's it's good to go. Like that's fine. Um, that. <laughs> It's just a, a completely ridiculous backpack, you know? It's a really, <laughs> really ridiculous. Um, my mast has, um, you know, where it's uh, the degree of bevel that's happening, where it's it's much thinner at the top than the uh, original toy was. So, like, these whole, I had to close this hole up a little bit to make up for how thin this piece is. Um, I have, uh, can, can you put me up? Uh, there you go. So this, this is the, the boom. I've got the gun. Um, I did not design in like a rigid uh, cord. So like this is a separate little rubber tube that I got. Um, so I have that tube that runs from the the gun to the trigger mechanism. 
and then this attaches like a like a missile would. So that's that's good to go just like that. Oh my goodness. Uh, so let's see if anyone's got any like no kidding questions about fusion or, or whatever that we can address before we kind of call this a day. <coughs> Yeah, I'm just going to ask, is, as far as uh, print bits are concerned, will this print on your your average size print bit? bit yeah, and that was do you need part, part of why I, I definitely wanted to keep the collapsibility of, um, of that original design. Like, you know, the mass is two pieces. Right. Like, the, I think the biggest piece is probably the front of the board. But, like, the mast... That's like uh, 150 mil. I could do this in the software, I suppose. 160 millimeters. That's mm -hmm. that's pretty. This is like the biggest piece. Everyone should be able to print this on whatever they've got. Right. So it should be it should be easy. Um, someone asked if the backpack was included. Yeah, like every everything you see on the screen right here will be in the file folder that I that I post. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So thirteen pieces, which is it's a lot of pieces, but um, none of it's none of it's real tough to print. So, and were you able to do? Um multiples on the same same printer. i mean i've got the the jupiter so like yeah i could do i could probably do five of these at once on the jupiter yeah, yeah. might be pushing it though I, I don't like to overload the the print bed so and i i still have like a a rough spot of fep that i'm avoiding <laughs> i really i need to change the stamp fep so bad and i'm uh, just how many screws is that? Like sixty thousand. My 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 issue is like when you change the like I've got the factory FEP on this thing, and it's the right mm -hmm. it's the right. Uh, yeah, and tolerance. And, yep, that, that that's and flat. when I change yeah. it, there's no fucking way. It just I print something that just works. There's no way I'm gonna have to go and tighten this screw and tighten that screw. And, and fuck with it and have fails and have to clean it. And I it's just like, it's just hours. I just, I just know it's hours of my life that I'll never get back. And I've got so much shit to do <laughs> that and it, it's just like frustrating hours of frustration. That's what it is. It's setting I myself just, up for hours of frustration. That's where, that's where you get one of one of the boys, you get the boys with, to come like, through. Like, and like then my do boys, your like to have one of my <laughs> do it. Yep. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I could survive that. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. So uh, I've I've got this one and I've glued it together. It's nice and solid. Um. I don't. I don't know. I don't I don't know how well this thing's gonna do when it's not yeah I'll tell you what like it was a little bit it was a little loose it had a little more play than I wanted before I painted it and it's pretty damn solid now so maybe maybe my thing where I feel like it should just everyone should just glue it maybe that's just not necessary at all like it's pretty it's pretty tight man And it, like I, I like seriously, I didn't sand any of the joints. The real test, the real test well, is maybe, these guys. Yeah, everybody's going to have some different tolerances on their their printer. But the other thing is going to be: Are you just going to display it, or are you going to be going out and doing photography yeah. work with, with it, stuff like yeah, you, that? You know. Taking it down to the lake and putting <laughs> your kids on it. <laughs> Yeah. So the um these still they, they don't grab so well that they can support themselves. 
So everything else is pretty tight, but the the outrigger, the supports, they're a little wonky. If I if I shake this too much, it's like the outrigger is going to come off. Um, so that part's a little loose, but otherwise, it's pretty stable. So I hope I asked answered some questions. I I have. I, like seriously, like um, I still I'm still recovering from being sick, and like, uh, I'm kind of spacing out, <laughs> honestly. Um, but yeah, so it's the um, the two parts of the board, the outrigger, the two supports, the boom, two pieces of the mast, the 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 modified gun, and then like the trigger for the gun. I mean, yeah. So the, the tubing I have is like a 0.7 millimeter rubber tubing that I got from like um like a website that sells like beads. Yeah. Um yeah. and I'll see if I can figure out where I got it from. I like they're the devil. Like I've only found this one place where I got exactly the tubing I wanted and I ordered from them. And I get more spam like emails and shit from this place than anything else. And so I have them like blocked everywhere um and i just i bought enough tubing that i wouldn't have to deal with them for years um, but i'll see if i can find the name a link to it so if if anyone wants they can buy it and i use the same stuff for like any of my guns like the uh like flash or zaps no flash flashes laser gun that goes to the backpack like any of that stuff this is the tubing i use hmm. okay. um so I'll, I'll i'll figure out a link and and share it Sweet. I had found some for the three and three quarter scale at uh yeah at your at your local hobby shop, hobby lobby, stuff like that. But I don't I haven't seen any for the uh six inch scale. Yeah. Uh cool. So So any any fusiony questions before we we call it? Dude. There I mean, there's so many. It's kind of one of those things that like if if you were tr definitely trying to follow along and design it at the same time, there'd be a thousand questions. Oh yeah. Cause like, cause I, I didn't finish either. Like because I mean, <laughs> cause like when you move through you move through kind of at and I know you could probably go faster, I'm sure. But you move through at such a, a, a pace where it's like, how did he do that, or where where did he go and find that? And yeah. that's that's kind of one of those things. It's it's generally you'd have to rewatch the the stream to really follow along and kind and of I, and like and stop. And it, it's like when I like, cause I'm still trying to, I'm really trying to learn ZBrush right now, mm -hmm. and so I'm watching tutorials and. And yeah, they'll just like, okay, real quick, we're gonna we're gonna change this normal real quick. And it's like click, click, click. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Where were you? Yeah, it's you like, well, you. shit. I guess I'm gonna go watch eight more tutorials to find out how to get because <laughs> I have no idea what the hell they just did. Yeah. Right. And and it's and that's why I like I really try and encourage people to actually tune in and ask the damn question. Because it's well, no, it's, it was, it's it's too much. If I were to if I were to verbalize every every click, I mean, this would be like a thirty hour build. You know? <laughs> no, but definitely appreciate it uh, where you show Mike how to how to bring that gun in and make it workable in there. Yep, absolutely, that, that stuff was crucial. I know. Yeah, yeah, and it took. It took I'm actually sitting there wondering where did you learn that? Like, where did you even get that from? Uh, uh, so, so that part I figured out myself, so, so it used to work differently. It used to be a, two years ago, it was a completely different process. And I, and I had figured that out from watching videos and shit, but mm -hmm. then when the process changed, now there's no videos, right? Because no one's had time to create that content yet. So I, I worked it out. It just took trial and error, but that's like, no kidding. That's a big deal. That, that little trick. Um, 
yeah there's there's some other stuff like i mean that's a that's a video for another time but um it's pretty crucial when you're interacting and, and doing uh, doing design that goes with other design it's pretty important that you're able to bring in other things to to look at and manipulate and tweak your own design um yeah but STL files are just, they're not meant to be modified. It's the, they're meant to be a final product. Right, right. Uh, I don't know if you'll see it. So uh, this is a complete set here, all 13 pieces. Um, if I go file and then export, did the, did the window come up for you guys? Can you see the window that came up, the export window? Uh, no? no. Okay. Uh, well, trust me, a window came up. And what I'll do is um, under type, uh, we'll create a step file or STP or STEP file. And once you've got that and you open that in Fusion, you can, you can manipulate the hell out of all the pieces that you've got. And um, I'm pretty curious if, if people get around to playing with that or if everyone just gets the STL and uh, prints up their their Manta. Oh, nice. All right, I think uh, I think that's it. So um, once we are officially off of here, I will be uploading a folder with the step files and the folder with the um, the STL files to uh, Thingiverse uh, to my Patreon, and we'll get them onto the GI Joe 3D Printing Facebook page in the in that media folder. So this should be everyone should have it, and it will include the PDF file of the, um, the pattern, the, the pattern, pattern yeah. for the sale. Uh, yeah, I'm curious if, if I'm curious what kind of sales people come up with. <laughs> you know. Like I grabbed, I just went to uh, Joanne Fabric and found um, two different camo patterns. One of them is like just a pretty plain woodland, like camo pat, military looking woodland pattern. And, but this one with that's got the blue on it. I thought that was, that was as good as I was going to get for sure. Like the actual pattern on the original piece of plastic, like that's, I love how it's more dense at the bottom than at the top. I mean, it's really fantastic design, um, but that that fabric isn't out there in the wild. Like, I would have to screen print this on mm -hmm. each sale to to duplicate it, um, which I'm considering. But uh, that's a that's a whole other project, you know. Most importantly, before you release the files, are you going to add the poly perch? <laughs> oh yes, thank you. At the top. At the yeah, top. yeah. Yep. yep, yep, yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me that. Because I definitely want Polly to be able to sit up at the top there for shipwreck. Yeah, good call, Mike. Thank you. And for those of you who are, who are watching and like, hey, how come you haven't, how come we don't do these more often? This is actually uh, sort of like how we got started. This is taking us back to our roots of how uh, it all began. Mark used to sit around on Saturdays and, and just draw up stuff. Yep. And uh, we kind of go through this whole thing. Yeah, it's, uh, I remember joining for the Firefly gun. <laughs> Was that the first one? Way back in the day. Way back, yeah. And that's, uh, that was how I got into Tinkercad. I hadn't, I'd never even opened Tinkercad before joining that. Well, what, how did you find it? Uh, we, I had found, I had already been printing things and I had found your, some of your files on uh, Thingiverse. Okay. And then I think we were, we may have even started chatting at that point. And I think you said, hey, you know, I'm going to do a stream. Come and join it. Okay. Oh, man. That was, that was years. That was like four years ago, right? Like yes, three or four years ago. Three yeah. or four years ago. Yep. Okay. Was, even, was that before COVID even? Oh, yeah. That was. Yeah. That, that was pre COVID. Wow. Time flies. Yep. <laughs> Good thing COVID's gone and no one's getting that anymore. Jesus. 
<laughs> I just want to be. I want to be better so bad. At least I'm sleeping. Like I, I definitely. Uh, like, the first, like three days in a row, got maybe like two hours of sleep, like in oh, fifteen geez. minute chunks. And I'm just like, I'm still recovering from that. Like, it's just, it's been brutal. Just being tired, you know? exhausted. Yeah. Yep. So uh, Ben actually threw out a good suggestion. Uh, if we want to do this again, and I think we may have even talked about this, Mark. Uh, some of those goofy motorized backpacks. Um, I don't have any of them currently. I had two as a kid. Um. So that makes it hard. I don't know that blueprints existed for them mm, good at all. Like that's an easy thing to check real quick. I'll just go to 3djoes.com. Uh, oh, here it is. Uh, any idea what any of those were called or what year they were? They probably would have been 87, 87 or 88. I'm not even sure what uh, Carson would count those as. Motorized action packs. Oh, there they are. Anti-aircraft gun. We'll do that one. Um, uh, there's a bit of a thing. Hold on. Oh, yeah, me, there's, um, it's, it's not so much a blueprint, but it shows where to put the labels on it. So that, yeah, gets you we, that kind of gets you what you need. Let me stop sharing this screen, and I'll sh share that. <laughs> oh, my God. Film tab. What? I had never seen this picture of Crockmaster on the rope climber. Oh, that's so right here. Beneath it. That is brilliant. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, so we've got we've got kind of an orthographic e blueprinty something, but it's pretty rough. That that's yeah. a real that's rough. Um so I don't know if these are the way to go. Like pack rats would be an easy one. Pack rats is what's been on my mind um, to try yeah, to I, do. Actually, I, I've seen the missile and the machine gun pack rats. I don't think anyone has ever done the flamethrower pack rat. Which is the only one that I owned as a kid was yeah. the flamethrower one. <laughs> uh, I I think I think the next one we should do will be the uh, the ammo dump. The one that was just like a big crate. That one we could probably get done in time. I don't know. There, there's, there's, there's stuff, right? Like there's the bivouac. There's those little play sets. There's some oh, yeah. easier things. Not it's tough, like because I, I want to like just doing something. Like I want to do something we can quickly get through. Right. But if it's just if it's real basic 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 then i don't know if there's a much of a takeaway this had the the mast was a challenge um i really should have done the the where the board connects together um yeah oh i got it the road toad yeah that's like it's like um it's that's what right, everyone's it's been silver and it gets towed <laughs> that one's terrible <laughs> but it's also i guarantee it's got some uh some little chunks of detail. It's got some challenges to it. Yeah. 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 Huh. Ooh, the coastal defender. Yeah, there's some really good ones we could. Uh... Yeah, coastal's been done. Did someone do the coastal defender? Uh, pretty sure. Yeah. Well, I like it was on my short list, but somebody, I feel like somebody did it. So, yeah. Actually, what, what would be awesome if you took a look at Mark would be to look at the original design for the Coastal Defender, where instead of that little boxcar thing, oh, yeah, it was, was, was going to be the size the, of a, the, the truck trailer. Yeah. You know, yeah. You add, you, you've already got the cab. Yeah. We we talked about this um, last year at some point. You and I were talking about this because you had, you had found the the art. Yeah. Um, which is probably in one of those, one of Dan Killingsmith's books. I imagine maybe so. I know it's on 3D Joe's, yeah. uh, and I'm I'm pretty sure it'll make it into the book. But uh, it it's on 3D Joe's under the I, I think it's the unproduced or the archive site. Yeah. Cool. 
All right, let's go ahead and uh, we'll we'll kill it. I apologize, I wasn't able to power through this whole thing, but I'm just fucking falling apart over here. Uh, you know what? You've been you've been at it for two hours and forty five minutes. Yeah, we we'll, not to um, mention the pre show. Plus yeah. pre game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we'll um, he's tired. We'll get these, we'll, I'll get these files out within the next hour, and um, I'm I'm excited to see what, what people make with it. So yep. Yeah, we appreciate you doing this, Mark. That was awesome. Cool. Uh, I think I can actually hit the button and end it, so I'm going to try. Okay.